Hey, what's up YouTube? It's ICU. I'm back and today we're talking about jailbreaking and iOS 13.6.1, which if you didn't know was released by Apple yesterday. And in addition to fixing the green screen issue that a lot of iPhone owners were experiencing, it also has some other under the hood adjustments and fixes. So 13.6.1. In this video, we're going to, again, talk about jailbreaking, and I'm going to show you how to jailbreak 13.6.1 on an older device. This is an iPhone 10, as you can see, on iOS 13.6.1. We're about to get into it, but first, let's go over some housekeeping things. We're actually going to switch on over to my site, Best Tech Info, and also Apple's security update page. Everything you need can be found down below in the description, and I'm just going to adjust the camera here real quick because I am honestly way too lazy to screen record this portion of the video. All right, so first and foremost, the jailbreak status for the upcoming iOS 14 firmware, as well as the last few iOS 13 updates, including 13.6.1, can be found linked down below in the description, and it contains the status for the newest devices in particular, because as many of you know, CheckRain will only function on up to the iPhone 10. So everything below the iPhone 10 is supported. Everything after the iPhone 10 is not supported by CheckRain. And this article, again, again, contains that information. Like I mentioned, there is not currently a jailbreak for iOS 13.5.1 through iOS 13.6.1 for every single device, only for the older ones. Newer devices like the iPhone XS and iPhone 11 powered by the A12 and A13 CPUs respectively are not able to jailbreak any public firmware higher than iOS 13.5. This is because Apple patched the latest uncovered jailbreak with the release of 13.5. Point one, and what I previously stated remains true for iOS 13.6.1 on newer devices. Also, there is an iOS 13.5.1 vulnerability that exists that could potentially be exploited and result in an updated version of Uncover. However, at this point, I think that that's very unlikely. That's just my professional take on it as iOS 13 in general will be superseded shortly by iOS 14 and it will be entirely phased out. So it almost doesn't seem like it's worth the security research effort it would take to get it functioning on iOS 13.5.1, such a minor incremental update over iOS 13.5 and we had a very long window for that iOS 13.5 jailbreak in general. So I do expect that the next jailbreak to be released for all devices, the newest ones, will target iOS 14 once it's released a later iteration of iOS 14, not iOS 13.5.1 through iOS 13.6.1. Of course though this could always change. The jailbreak situation is dynamic, never static, so I really do recommend bookmarking that page because it will contain the latest status listed first. And that again is down below in the description. And of course, I will also let you guys know here on the channel anytime anything changes, but it just takes a little bit longer to make that video and get it out. Those changes will be listed on that page first. Now next, yes, theoretically you can jailbreak utilizing Windows. You do need to do a bit of a workaround. However, it does still work. So that Windows tutorial will be linked down below in the description. The steps, once you get it functioning and once you get the essentially Linux installation bootable on your Windows-based PC are pretty much identical to the steps that we're going to go over here. It just does look a little bit different because it's the um, GUI version via a command line instead of just straight up GUI and it's just more simplified. But essentially what you do need to do, this is very important if you are using Windows and you are using this workaround, again, it still works today using Boot Rain, is to essentially enable the option to jailbreak unsupported or untested firmwares. Remember, because of the low level nature of the exploit in the utility we're about to talk about, it is possible to jailbreak iOS 13.6.1 on supported devices using that method, but you really do have to go into options and enable that first. Otherwise, it will talk about how your device is supported, but the firmware is not. So that is very key, very crucial that you guys understand this when attempting this on Windows. Now next, there are a couple of other limitations, but we've pretty much already gone over them. Namely, the fact that this does not support the newest devices. Really, it only supports older devices 
Windows. Again, there is no official Windows support as of now, but the workaround still does work so long as you do toggle that option to enable untested firmwares. And of course, you do need a computer. You simply cannot jailbreak without one because like I said, this uses a very low level exploit. It has to actually exploit it over USB. That is literally the only way, guys. It cannot be booted when it's actually delivering the jailbreak payload. Again, has to be that super low level state. That's why we do enter DFU mode, which you'll see in a little bit. But because of that, the byproduct is that the jailbreak will exist forever. It may need a couple of updates here and there in the future just because Apple could break some things, but they will never be able to patch this exploit on supported devices. Again, the iPhone 10 and older. So that is one very, very key advantage of something like CheckGrain. Okay, so with all of that out of the way, we can continue. Really what you guys need is just one thing in addition to your computer, which is ideally a Mac. That's what I'm showing you guys how to jailbreak with now. If you have that Windows PC, you're gonna need to utilize that workaround. Everything for that is linked down below in the description, including my tutorial, which the steps are basically exactly the same still to this date. And then also, of course, that written article with all download links everything can be found below. And then you do need a USB cable to connect your device to your computer and a supported device, and that's really it. Also, you do need a Wi-Fi connection for a little bit later in the tutorial, but at any rate, what I want you guys to do, since I am showing you how to do this on Mac in this tutorial, is simply navigate to the corresponding article for Mac. It is the very, very first link in the description, and uh, scroll down once you do. And I want you guys to look for this big green check rain down download button. I just want you guys to click it and then you're going to be redirected. Once the site gathers all of the necessary download links, you'll be redirected a second time. And I just want you guys to search right for where it says click here. Now, excuse me, I am going to zoom in here. We are not screen recording. Remember, I uh, am too lazy to edit through that right now. But essentially, I just want you guys to click right where it says click here and it will open a new tab. And then you should be able to download CheckRain. Just click on get the beta now and then click on download for Mac OS. And it's just going to put it inside of your downloads folder. So at that point, after downloading it, you can see the download is right here, download for Mac OS. You just want to open up your downloads folder and then you want to mount the .dmg or disk image file. And once it is mounted, you will just receive a little window that looks like this. It's a finder window. And you just need to drag CheckRain over inside of the applications folder. And after you do that, you might receive this message. If you've already used CheckRain in the past, it will just want to replace it with the latest version. But chances are good if this is your first time jailbreaking your device with CheckRain, you won't get this message. So don't worry about it. If you do, however, just click on replace and then you can just open up your applications folder and then open CheckRain. The first time you attempt to, you will receive this message right here. Let's zoom in. It basically says that CheckRain cannot be opened because it was downloaded from the internet and the developer cannot be verified. That's fine. Just click on cancel and we need to open up system preferences. It's the thing that looks like settings basically. And then go to security and privacy right here inside of system preferences. And I want you guys to then go to general if you're not there already. And you can see toward the bottom, it says that CheckRain was blocked from use because it is not from an identified developer the exact same message basically so we're going to click right where it says open anyway to the right of that and then you're going to click open to the pop-up this is just a security implementation put in place by Apple to again help prevent any sort of malware from running on your computer, but CheckRain is completely fine. Then you just need to open it one more time after clicking open to that pop-up from within inside applications and you will be able to use CheckRain. And now comes the fun part. Let me just get this adjusted here real quick to look best for this segment of the video. And uh, what you need to do is just connect your device to your computer via a USB cable. And you are going to get a message inside of Finder. If this is the first time connecting your device to your computer, you can see right here, I have this message. It asks me to trust the computer. And basically what I'm going to do is just tap on trust on my iPhone here put in my passcode 
And then inside of Finder on your computer under your device section, it's also going to have just a little trust button right here. Just click on that and then the connection should be established between the devices and you can proceed. Again, that only happens if it's really the first time connecting your device to your computer. So at this point, now inside of CheckRain, we can proceed by clicking on options, and then we're going to check off the box up at the top to allow untested iOS, iPadOS, tvOS versions. Now at some point in the future, CheckRain will be updated to include native support for iOS 13.6.1 and above, but as of now, you can see it says, sorry, iPhone 10 Global is supported, but iOS 13.6.1 is not. This is the exact same message that you might receive in inside of CheckRain, or rather that you will receive inside of CheckRain if attempting to do the workaround on Windows that I mentioned previously. But like I said, you just go to options, you allow that capability, and then you can proceed. So now you can click on start. It's just going to give you a little warning letting you know that you're going to proceed at your own risk. Just go ahead and click on OK. And at this point, if you guys really want to, you can create a backup of your device on your computer or inside of iCloud. That way you can restore your data. If anything happens, though, I've never had any issues personally with CheckRain, but again, you're using it at your own risk, so know that in advance. I'm clicking on OK here, and it's just letting me know that it's going to put my device into DFU mode. So once again, I'm going to zoom out, and we're going to get the best view possible for this shot right here. And I'm going to click on Start, or rather Next, and it's going to put my device into recovery mode, basically. So. That is just needed to ensure that there is no file system corruption once you do enter DFU mode. So you can see we are in recovery mode. It just looks like a little computer with a USB cable connected to it. And uh, right here, it's letting you know that you're going to have to go through the motion to enter DFU mode. It tells you the steps to the left here to prepare you in advance. Once you hit start, it's going to proceed with a countdown. So iPhone 10 and iPhone 8 style devices are exactly what you're going to see here in this video and what I'm going to do. However, if you do have an older device, the steps are a little bit different, but basically you're either just going to use the home button or the side button in some combination with volume down. It will let you guys know inside of CheckRain exactly the procedure for your specific device. So I'm going to hit start. This is a little bit tricky since I am so far away from my monitor right here and the camera is having a little bit of a hard time, but I'm going to click on start and I'm going to hold down the side and volume down buttons together for roughly three seconds, then release the side button and continue holding volume down until it does enter DFU mode. You can see we are inside of DFU mode successfully now, and it's just proceeding through the jailbreak process. It is actually going to exploit the boot ROM presently, and you'll see the customary scrolling text it looks pretty awesome, honestly, and that's probably going to be the thumbnail for this video if it's really in focus. Super hard to tell here with the way I'm recording. Seriously, I look like a gymnast at this point trying to get everything in frame because um, the monitor is pretty huge. I actually got a new monitor. I may talk about that in a subsequent video, but it is a 49-inch monitor. It's pretty awesome. Okay, now at this point, you'll see we do have a new CheckRain application on our device's springboard right here in a blank space. And you do need a active internet connection like I mentioned previously, so you do need to be connected to Wi-Fi or LTE. And then just open up CheckRain and then tap on Cydia, followed by install Cydia at the bottom. And now it's just going to download the base system and it's going to actually install Cydia on your device. And again, it will be fully jailbroken after this process. Now, keep in mind that this is a tethered jailbreak. We're gonna launch up Cydia while I explain this. What this means is that anytime you wanna use Cydia or your jailbreak stuff, so to speak, from Cydia, you essentially have to plug it into a computer and rerun through the same steps. It's super, super easy though. Like I said, remember, all you really do is just plug in, go to options, allow untested iPad OS or iOS versions, and then click on start. It's gonna put you into recovery mode and then just follow the steps to enter DFU mode and boom, you're done. So 
Like I said, you need to do that every time you reboot your device, but if you just go through a simple respring, you don't have to worry about that. Only a full-fledged reboot, and you can still use all of your system applications. So everything that's not related to your jailbreak, when you do reboot your device, or if it dies and powers up, but once it does that, you're gonna have to actually run through CheckRain again to get everything functioning properly. So I'm going to tap right here on complete upgrade. This is exactly what I want you guys to do as well. And you'll see that it actually functions. We are fully jailbroken on the latest firmware, iOS 13.6.1, and we can successfully install packages from Cydia. That's it guys, how awesome is that? One last thing, I wanna go inside of Cydia and confirm that we are running the latest version. Okay, so at the bottom right here, you'll see Cydia does in fact confirm that we are running an iPhone 10 comma three or an iPhone global version with iOS 13.6.1 and the latest iteration of Cydia. How awesome is this guys? Fully jailbroken on the latest firmware. So don't forget everything I've said throughout the duration of this video, it's all super important stuff. And uh, of course, if you're looking for things to get from Cydia now, then check out some of our top tweaks videos. You can find those down below as well. And uh, yeah, guys, hope you like this one. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.